Hey guys, I am Game Advisor and welcome to our Talents Guide. Now we did have an older video if you have watched that one, but this is an updated version with all the new talents included, as well as some of the changes that have been made to old talents. We're going to kind of dive in, talk about what we think is good, why we think it's good, and what we think is bad, and why we think it's bad. Now we may not cover every single talent as that would take us forever to talk about, but we will get the general idea of each talent category, as well as each different tree you can go down and whether or not it's even worth bothering with. Also, please remember that this is all just my opinion, and at the end of the day, if you like a certain talent or a certain build, just go play it. It's fun, it's a PvE game, there's no PvP, so there's no always 100% right answer, and what you enjoy is probably going to be the best option. With that being said, let's go ahead and start out by going over the solo talent tree, as this tree is probably going to be the most relevant one. Now, I do also want to make sure that it's clear that the majority of things I'll be talking about are in relation to the mission-based game mode. That means if you're playing in the open world mode, some of the reasons I say a talent is good or bad may not apply to you. If you are playing in open world mode, you have different goals to achieve and therefore talents that you will want to pick because you are trying to achieve those goals. So just keep that in mind as I'm talking about the talents. Now in the solo tree itself, we have a few major outliers of good and bad talents. Some bad talents would be things such as your steel ankles. This one's just gonna reduce your chance to take a sprain whenever you take fall damage. Really not that big of a deal compared to some of the other ones in here. You've also got stuff like 10% food effectiveness duration. Food is so easy to get in Icarus, especially by the time you get to endgame, that this is just a waste of a talent point. You've also got things like harder to detect when sneaking. I could see the value in it, but at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal, and most people won't even bother sneaking by the time they hit endgame. You've also got other things down here at the lower end of the tree, like yield from foraging. And just for reference, foraging is going to be anything you just interact with the world with or you would use a sickle on. So this will be your fiber, your berries, things like that. You've also got down here increased yields from hunting with things like getting fur and leather, which are two of the most abundant resources in the game as you can find animals everywhere and you don't need a lot of leather or fur once you have an armor set from the workshop. Now if we go over to the other side of the talent tree, we can see things like got to damage fast. This makes your hedgehogs deal more damage. Let's be real, not many people use hedgehogs. If you use them all the time, it could be useful, but this will really only be useful on things like boss battles with like a mammoth, or if you have polar bears charging you and you happen to already have crafted them. Once again, a lot of people won't bother with this because they've already gotten to the point in the game where you no longer need the hedgehogs. Polar bears are easy to beat once you know how to just go ahead and do what we call olaying them, which is where you jump out of the way. We've also got gun talents over here, which give us extra damages to firearms, which again could be useful, but at the end of the day, isn't enough to warrant a talent point because you usually won't be using guns in missions. And then lastly, you've got the efficient home maintenance talent. This will just make it so that your stamina regeneration whenever you're repairing something or using a fire whacker is a little bit better. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. Pretty much all of those talents are absolute no-goes for doing missions. There's an argument to be had for the gun one, but the rest of them are just completely worthless to you. As far as the good ones go that I haven't already selected, you've got the Spears talent over here. So if you are going into a Spears build, this would be a good option for you. But if you're not using them, don't bother. And then same thing for the knives and bow talents. I personally really like the bows in the game as I don't want enemies to get close to me and knives are always my go-to melee weapon. So again, this is your choice here, but it is really up to you. As we go look more at the top, we've got extra melee damage, always a good option to have as a filler talent, but not necessarily necessary if that's something you want. We've got some increased health regen and max HP, which is always going to be good to have as well. Some move speed, which is nice, some extra stamina and stamina regeneration. And if I'm being honest, it doesn't hurt to put an extra point over here or put some points in these two talents. This will give us extra yield from felling trees, which is OK ish. But really, we want the miners reward, which will give us extra yield from mining. This can save you from having to go to another cave and find more titanium or gold to craft something for a mission. 
can save you a lot of time if it happens to be just enough, but if it's not, it ends up being mostly useless for missions, but then again, if you're doing open world mode and only playing open world mode, it could be argued that this might be one of the best talents since you're going to be just constantly trying to build up and up and up and make a really cool base and things like that. There's also the option to take the Tizpa a Scratch talent. This will just give you some physical resistance. This means you'll take less physical damage, which is basically everything in Icarus for the most part outside of Worms, Poison Attacks, and Scorpion Stings. This is really nice to have, but again, not mandatory by any means. We've also got down here some water, food, and oxygen consumption, which is just nice for the mission purposes, but if you're on open world, again, pretty much worthless. And then we've got things like yield from felling trees, mining stone, and harvesting. This covers all three of those talent categories, which makes it a particularly good talent. Now, the reason I actually did bother to put points into Savage Hunter is because I use a bow and I don't want to go ahead and craft high-end arrows all the time, so I wanted the extra bones that I could get from animals in order to craft those bone arrows and save me time on the overall mission. Again, this is not a necessary talent, it's arguable if it's even good to be honest, but I like it. Now, some of the best talents in the tree are going to come from things like Pack Horse. Pack Horse will give you 25% weight capacity. That is massive in Icarus if you've been playing the game for a while. We've also got things like Carry Weight of Wood, Stone, and Ores. Those are pretty much all the things that add tons of weight to your inventory. And then we've got down here the Lone Wolf talent, which will just give you extra experience. Another great talent that you will always be using no matter what mode you're in. Now, I do want to give a special shout out to this talent right here, which is called Health Monitor. And I would highly recommend that you guys take this talent. This talent is absolutely very, very powerful. This allows you to see animal health bars, which allows you to spot them farther away, allows you to make hunting easier, and overall just makes it so you know how much health your opponent has and how much more damage you need to do, so you know if you need to run from a fight or continue fighting it. I highly, highly recommend you get this talent and the experience talent as soon as humanly possible, along with the two weight ones. The rest are all totally optional and dependent upon what you like, with some of them being a little worse than others in most cases. Now, before I move on, I'm going to go ahead and just hold, look right here at all my talents so you guys can pause the video if you want. And I'll be doing this for every set of talents that I go through so that you guys can copy them if that's something you're interested in. Now, moving on to our next set of talents, let's start out by going through the survival tree. This tree has a lot of extremely optional talents. Nothing in here is an absolute 100% must have every single time. However, there are some extremely useful talents in here. So starting with the resources tree, we've got things like lumber yield. This is just nice to get more wood. It's great. It's beneficial. We've got things like mining yield, also beneficial weight capacity, over encumbrance penalty. This is particularly good when you're actually walking back from being overweight from a ton of ore. This can be an extremely powerful talent in those cases if you take all four points in it. Now we've also got things like yield from foraging, which as we've already talked about earlier, are not the best talents to be taking for a number of different reasons. Moving further down in the tree, we've got things like mining more oxide, which is a very easy resource to get more than enough of. We've also got waste knot, which makes you have a chance to find additional resources while mining. This usually comes in the form of stone whenever you're mining an ore deposit, which is already easy enough to get, so who cares? Then we've got things like carry weight for exotics. How often do you actually find enough exotics in your game that you have to stop and drop items in order to carry them? I'm betting very rarely unless you are specifically going into a mission to get exotics and at that point it's not that big of a deal. We've also got extra weight capacity moving further down into the tree. This is a huge one. This is 20% weight capacity, and all these weight capacity bonuses really start to add up. You've got carry weight reduction for stone, which can be very useful, carry weight reduction for ores, carry weight reduction for wood, all of which, again, are very useful because carry weight's a big deal in Icarus. Now, moving further down into the tree, we have things like Metal Miner. Metal Miner will give you 20% yield from mining iron, which is the most commonly used ore, so it's very nice to have, but by no means mandatory. 
We've also got things like movement speed while carrying exotics. Again, same reasons that exotic power isn't that good because you're usually not finding that many in a mission. Then you've got seasoned logsmen. This, in my opinion, is one of, if not the very best talent in this entire category of survival. Now, the reason for that is that it makes it so that you don't actually have to grab the little individual pieces of wood after you chop it up on the ground, and instead it will just put it straight into your inventory. It saves so much time over time through missions. It may seem like it's only a couple seconds, but when you have to get tens of thousands of wood for multiple different missions over the course of maybe playing for a week, this could save you an hour or two of just picking up wood. So I highly recommend you grab this one. We've also got Fallen Tree Resistance, and if I'm being honest, I never get hit by fallen trees, and when I do, it's not that big of a deal, so I just don't care about it. And then you've got the other two arguably best talents in this entire category, and those are going to be Perilous Lumberjack and Lucky Strike. Both of these give you a 1% chance to instantly mine an entire ore deposit or instantly gather all the resources from a tree. Very useful, although they don't trigger that often, so they're not mandatory, but they are still very, very powerful. And if we're already all the way down here for Season Logsmen in the weight capacity, it doesn't hurt to put the two extra points in to pick these up. Now, moving over to the exploration tree, I probably am going to just say here that there are some good talents and there are a lot of bad talents here. We've got things like extra move speed, which I personally really enjoy as it allows me to cover long distances very quickly in missions. You've also got things like pack lightly, which is particularly useful because it gives you extra weight capacity. So I would definitely recommend you go and pick these two up if nothing else in this tree. You can skip the rest if you don't want it just like I did. It's totally up to you. Now, I want to talk about some of the grayed out ones. There are some that are good and some that are just not that good. Storm exposure is not a big deal. Just go up and up Icarus Intel, which is a third party website, and all you need to do is go run inside a cave, and congratulations, you now have no more storm damage. It's very easy to get rid of exposure or build a one by one out of thatch. Now, we also have things like max HP. This one could be useful if you're planning to be the main combat person in a group, but when you're playing solo, you don't always need to take this. Next is water, food, and oxygen consumption reduction. These, I'm going to be honest, like I've talked about before, are useful, but not worth three whole points each. That's nine talents if you want to take all of these, and you just don't consume enough food and water and oxygen to make this worth your time. Moving further down, we've got stamina consumed by jumping. Eh, it could be useful, not that useful. Then we've got health restored to incapacitated players. If you're playing solo, completely worthless. If you're playing with friends, maybe a little bit useful, but not enough to be worth taking talent points in it. We've got nearby allies have reduced oxygen consumption. If you're playing in a party of eight, this could be good, but otherwise I'd totally skip it. And then you've got things like increased swim speed, oxygen consumed while swimming, movement speed at night, and oxygen consumed at night. Again, all these oxygen consumption ones at this point, I'm just gonna start glancing over because the idea here is that you're not gonna be consuming enough for it to matter. One filled oxygen exotic tank will last you like two to four hours of real lifetime, and that is more than enough to complete just about every single mission in the game, which makes these talents totally worthless. Swim speed is just not important enough. You don't swim enough in Icarus for it to matter. Movement speed at night is a little bit more useful because Night Owl just allows you to get around the map quicker. But generally speaking, I like to go to sleep at night to get that big stamina regeneration buff from sleeping in bed. So I usually just don't take this talent in the first place, not to mention I'd have to spend a ton of points elsewhere to even get down here. Then we've got more consumption at night, which again is not that big of a deal. Movement speed during final moments of a mission, which is only the last 15 minutes of a mission. And I don't know about you, but I have yet to encounter the last 15 minutes of a mission in over 300 plus hours of gameplay. We've got things like reviving a player also regenerates some of your health. Again, not that useful. Falling resistance, not that useful. We've got a chance to avoid sprains, not that useful for the same reasons it wasn't in the solo tree. We've got sprain duration, same purposes as the previous one, not that useful. We've got some more things down here at the very bottom, which is movement speed in the forest, which could be good. We've got movement speed in the Arctic and movement speed in the desert, but you have to put in so many points up here in all these garbage talents just to get down to these ones, and therefore I'm not gonna take them. It's just not worth it. 
And then lastly, you've got shared experience gain. This would be the only reason, if I'm being completely honest, that it might be worth taking some of these garbage talents to get down to this one. This one is nice if you're playing in a large group, but if you're not, it's again, totally worthless. Now, as far as the hunting and cooking trees go, I'm just gonna be blatantly honest with you guys here. There isn't a lot of good talents. Yes, you might get a little bit more of a specific resource that you could be using. And yes, there is things like leather breakdown, which allow you to turn leather into rope. But at the end of the day, most of these talents are just not worth going down for. The only ones that I would even consider taking points in here for are things like health bars. This just allows you to see animal health bars just like the solo talent does. So if you're not playing solo, it's worth going down to get this. But if you are playing solo, it's not going to matter. It's four points that you could have put elsewhere. Yeah, stamina regen's nice. Yeah, leather breakdown is kind of nice, but they're not really worth the points that you could be putting into, say, your combat tree or be putting into more weight or mining, things like that. There's just a lot of better options. They're not horrid, but they're just not good enough to be worth taking. Again, these are all animal related, and when it comes to getting animal products, it's very easy in Icarus compared to some of the other resources which is why we're saying just don't bother wasting your time in the tree. And at the end of the day, it's just not that big of a deal. I do also want to point out that you may be thinking, hey, what about the ghillie armor and polar bear armor blueprints? These are nice, but again, as soon as you have exotic armor, you'll probably never bother with it. There's a very slim chance that you'll ever bother to make polar bear armor over fur armor or leather armor if you were already going to. So again, not that big of a difference unless you're playing only in the Arctic for some reason. Now we have the same problems with the cooking and farming tree and the farming portion of it might actually be useful if you're planning to build a big farm in like your home world or in other words, your open world mode, if that's what you're planning on playing on most of the time. But outside of that, this tree's pretty garbage. You've just got a whole bunch of farming stuff, which you're never going to really care to actually do inside of a mission unless it's specific tells you to. So the amount of time you're going to spend using these talents is next to zero. If we go look at all the meal ones, we've got nutrition from food. We've already talked about this. Getting food, getting water, getting oxygen is not that hard. It's not really worth that many talent points, especially not this many in a tree with nothing good in it. We've got more things like making it so that campfires consume less wood, whoop de doo not that hard to get wood in the first place, growth rate of crops. Again, this whole crop section, I'm just pretty much going to ignore because again, if we're being honest here, it just doesn't matter unless you're playing on a map that you plan on playing on nonstop. The value you get from planting crops is basically zero. Now, talking about some of the other ones, you have things like a dried meat modifier effectiveness. This is one of the few talents that could be worth it if you always go for dried meat in your missions. If you don't, though, just ignore it. Even if you do, there are still other equally good options in other trees that will help you get farther down in them, or this one will just be getting this talent and then dipping out. Same thing goes for the vegetarian one. If you're finding yourself eating a lot of fruit and vegetables, it could be useful, but not that big of a deal. The only other talent that I even think is really worth pointing out here is going to be the rusty shotgun, which if I'm being honest, from what I've seen is not that good. But if we really want to talk about it, you could say that the food pyramid is extremely powerful. This allows you to have a fourth food buff. It's not that big of a deal, but it is very nice to have if you want to have that extra HP or stamina or stamina regen or whatever other buff you want to have. Not that big of a deal, but could arguably be worth it if you happen to already be going in the tree for one reason or another. Okay, moving on over to the habitation tree, I'm just going to be honest with you guys. These ones are just not worth your time. There are arguments to be made for some of these talents, but at the end of the day, I'm not going to bother with them. The only one I cared about was stamina regen because 30% stamina regen makes your stamina go up a lot faster, which essentially makes you get across the map a lot faster and get to things you want to get to. You'll constantly be using it and therefore it's useful since it's also at the top of the tree. Now, tools wise, building wise, husbandry wise, I'm sorry guys, I just don't think it's worth your time. 
tamed creature bonuses are great and all and saddle crafting costs are great and all but most people won't be taming mounts in the first place it's just not worth your time the end of the day there are better things you could be doing yes you could argue that there's a point to go down husbandry if you specifically want to go down it to get stuff related to mounts because you find yourself constantly taming mounts in every single mission for one reason or another personally I don't even really bother with mounts anymore. The time it takes to tame one would be enough time for me to actually be wasting time versus when I could just be going ahead and crossing the map. They only go slightly faster than you do when you have enough move speed talents and therefore they're just not worth putting points into. As far as the building tree goes, it's pretty worthless. Like I said, this is just gonna reduce the cost of some buildings not worth your talent points. You've got some tool related ones, which make it a little bit easier to gather things, but more so focuses on your tools not breaking or making them a little bit better at chopping a tree or something like that. So for me personally, they're not worth my time. And then lastly, again, the repairing one, like I talked about earlier, just has a bunch of really garbage talents if you plan on repairing things. I do want to say even if you plan on repairing things such as your structure. It doesn't cost a lot of stamina in the first place to repair a wall, so there's really no point in putting talents in these. I will say there is one worth considering, and that's first responder. This is only worth taking if you don't want to take the move speed buffs for whatever your main weapon of choice is. This will give you a 10% move speed buff, which again, you could be getting in your main weapon of choice, but if for some reason you didn't take it, this is only going to cost you one point to get 10% move speed but it's in a tree where you won't be using anything else inside of it. You could argue that the Whacker Endurance could be useful if you take this one, but again, you should only take First Responder if and only if you are not taking a talent related to move speed for your primary weapon. And speaking of which, let's talk about the Combat Tree. Now, the Combat Tree has a lot of options within it. And I'm gonna be honest with you, all of them are viable, minus firearms for normal missions. Firearms have some value in them, yes, but at the end of the day, are they worth you putting all these points in firearms since you're probably not going to have to craft all the way up to a gun? Probably not. I'd rather be putting my combat talents in things like a bow for myself because I think they're the best weapon in the game, or spears, thrown spears, blades, or thrown blades. Now, if you didn't already know, by the way, there is a whole separate set of talents now for like thrown weapons and things like that, like thrown knives being highlighted, which makes them much easier to find, extra thrown weapon damage, a whole bunch of other different things. But at the end of the day, all three of these talent trees are almost identical to each other just because they're trying to make it so every weapon is viable. And I think that is great. I want every weapon to be viable. And if I'm being honest, all of them are arguably viable. I think throwing knives and bows are probably going to be your best options, only because if you do decide to go down the throwing knife tree, you can also pick up the melee knife talents, all within the same talent tree, allowing you to get to the bottom of them very easy. Unfortunately, with bows, you can't do that because they're only a ranged weapon. Same thing goes for spears, but I don't like throwing spears very much. I find them to be clunky and take too long to throw versus just being able to spam throwing knives at my targets if that's the weapon of choice I'm choosing. Now, the main argument for each tree is that blades, as we've just clarified, is going to be good if you want to have a melee and thrown weapon that you can craft in your game. Spears are going to be good if you want to try to one-shot most animals and you want to have a little bit more reach on your weapon. And then bows are going to be good if you want to take out your enemies from a distance and never want to engage in melee if at all possible. I personally think bows are the best for that reason because I don't want to be in a dangerous situation since almost every enemy in Icarus is a melee enemy. The only one we currently have is cave worms, but we might see in future DLCs that'll change. So if I stay at a distance, that means I don't take damage. And there's a lot of good talents in here. I'm just going to highlight a few of them because there's a lot to cover. But what you need to know is that everything you're going to see in this tree applies to the spears and blades tree. They're basically the same things, just these have some slight variations to them. 
Now in bows, we've got things like move speed. This is the talent you'll want to be taking with no matter what your main weapon of choice is. If you're a spear guy, you'll take the spear move speed. If you're a melee guy, you'll take the melee move speed. This is only because taking that extra move speed is just a nice talent to have to get around the map faster and then you'll have your main weapon ready to go. You won't have to swap or anything in case you get in a bad situation. We've also got things over here like crafted bow cost. This is really not honestly that useful, but hey, I took it anyways because at the time I was crafting a lot of bows, but no, I would not want to take it now that I'm at end game. We've also got things like stamina consumed while using bows. It could be useful. Again, if I'm being honest here, it's not that big of a deal. This only matters if you're holding your bow shots. Now we've got also things like reload speed for bows and crossbows. This one, a little more useful. Faster firing equals more damage. We've got things like aim speed with bows and crossbow. This is just how fast you can actually aim down sights with the weapon and is not really that big of a deal. We've also got increased arrow speed. This is good if you're trying to hit an enemy that's far away and don't have the tracking arrow talent. If you take that, this can actually backfire and make it so your arrows can never catch your enemies because they're flying circles around them. Following that is increased arrow damage. This one is a must have. It's 10% more damage. Why wouldn't you take it? It's just, hey, I'm gonna hit you harder now. Then we've also got more damage increase. Same thing. 10% more damage. You definitely need this talent. This is just more damage to do to your opponents. And again, a lot of this is still going to apply to blades and spears, which is why I won't be going in depth on those categories. Now we've also got things like trained bowsmith. This will give you plus 15% maximum health on any crafted bow in order to increase its durability. In other words, that bow will have 15% more durability, which is nice to have, but again, not necessarily that big of a deal, but still useful in certain situations. Next is wear rate, which I'm going to be honest, I don't think is worth your time unless you're going to be on a very long mission, such as on an open world mode. Then we've also got things like accuracy with bows and crossbows, and this is just going to make it a little bit easier to kind of aim from the hip. But at the end of the day, it won't matter if we're using the tracking talent, which again, I'll cover down below. We've also got craft double arrows when crafting at a 10% chance. This is nice to have because you're going to get 10% more arrows, period. Anytime you craft an arrow, you have a 10% chance to get two of them. Very, very useful. Would highly recommend if you're using bows. And then we've got cheaper bow crafting, which again, could be useful. I mostly like it for when I'm making high-end bows before I had my high-end bow from the workshop, but it can be useful for other things like making a cave worm bow and things like that whenever you're making them for your friends. You've also got things like critical hit damage. Why wouldn't we take it? It's so easy to hit heads in this game, especially with the arrow tracking talent, which I'm getting to, don't worry, as it will make this even more powerful since you'll home in on enemies' heads. Then we've got things like 15% chance to fire an extra arrow. This just makes you do double damage. Why wouldn't you want it? This is incredibly powerful. It can make you one shot things you'd never be able to one shot otherwise. And then moving further down, we've got 25% crit damage with bows and crossbows. Extremely useful again, because we're going to be doing a lot of crits thanks to, and you guessed it, the homing instinct talent. This talent allows your arrows to lock onto targets. You can't miss pretty much with this thing. If you even fire somewhat close to your target, it'll just home in on their head and hit them. I have literally fired arrows way further than I should be able to, and somehow I'm still hitting targets without even really aiming. This is an incredibly powerful talent, but can be a bit annoying if you have, say, a small creature run in front of you when you're trying to target something bigger as it targets the first thing it comes close to. Then we have the chance to immobilize enemies on hit. Whenever you're fighting things like bears, this is great as you can just spam arrows into them until they get locked down and then pump a bunch into their head. Moving on over to here, we have chance to slow on hit with bows and crossbows, which is also nice to have, but not necessarily mandatory. We've also got chance to wound on hit, which is just basically a bleed like effect to clarify for people. And then we've got supply and demand, which makes it so that you have extra projectile damage with crafted objects. This is incredibly powerful, and if I'm being honest, I would highly recommend you take it even though I haven't because I just don't want to spend the respec points since it's just going to give you 10% more damage on any projectile you craft. Incredibly powerful as long as you're crafting ammo inside of the actual missions. Now again, there are some notable talents in the sphere in Blade Trees. I'm not going to go in depth on these, but I do want to give a couple talents a shout out. Inside the blade tree, I want to point out the where'd that go talent, which makes it so thrown knives will be highlighted in the world. 
just makes it easier to spot these little devils because they are so hard to see sometimes. Following that is Stay Right There, which is an incredibly powerful talent. It makes it so you have a 100% chance whenever you throw a knife that critically hits, so like hits their weak spot, such as the head on a bear, to completely immobilize them. They just freeze for a second. It's 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 so powerful because then you can just keep spamming the head. This honestly makes throwing knives extremely good at competing with bows and maybe even better. The only unfortunate part about it is that you don't really want to bring in crafted throwing knives from your workshop, which is why I went down the bows tree, just because I didn't want to have to craft stuff in game. However, to help with that, you have minus 25% resource cost of crafted knives. This will just make that a little bit less tedious for you. You can make a lot more, but this makes it so that, hey, all you really need is stone knives and you can basically take out anything as long as it only has melee attacks. You've also got Killer Throw, which is another incredibly powerful talent when not fighting a boss. This makes it so you have a 5% chance, so a 1 in 20 shot of instantly killing any non-boss targets with a thrown knife. That's crazy. That's just like, hey, polar bear, one knife. Oh, you're dead. We did it. Good job, boys. That's basically like giving yourself a gun. It's incredibly powerful, but it's not necessarily going to outweigh the bow tree. If anything, this puts this on an even playing field with it. This is why I say if you're not going to go down the bow tree, I recommend you go down the knife tree. There are too many good throne and melee weapon talents inside the knife tree itself, or in other words, the blades tree, to make it worth going into spears or guns over blades. This is just my opinion, but I can see why people like those two weapon categories. Again, for spears, it's going to be very similar to the other trees like we've talked about. We've got extra throne damage. You've got all sorts of cool stuff, but there are a few notable ones, such as Spear Parry, which gives you some melee resistance whenever you have a spear equipped. This means less melee damage taken, which means you don't die as fast. We've also got some other things towards the bottom, such as being able to see highlighted spears. But again, if I'm being honest, the spears tree just can't compete with the blades and bows tree. There are too many good talents to make it worth going into the spears talent tree over these two. This gives you a good melee and ranged weapon. This gives you a very powerful ranged weapon. This gives you a mediocre melee and a mediocre to really good ranged weapon, depending on how good you are at aiming them. Now, lastly, let's talk about firearms. Yes, firearms are cool to have. Yes, firearms do a lot of damage. Are firearms really worth going down into the tree for? Probably not. The only talent I think it's worth you even bothering to go down in here is going to be for the 5% chance to craft additional ammo. This just makes it a little bit easier, and if you go down this tree, you also can get extra damage with rifles, which is the main weapon you should be using within this tree. You can also reduce ammo cost, which is also nice to see, but again, if I'm being honest with you guys, I really don't even know if this is worth taking. It would only be worth taking to get down to extra ammo crafting and some more rifle damage. The rest of these ones down here, like accuracy or wear rate or critical damage, just don't give you enough of a buff to be worth putting those talent points in over your main other weapon tree. And the reason we don't use firearms as our main weapon tree is simply because they take too long to craft. It takes ages to get to them when you could be just using a bow, spear, or knife and simply going ahead and completing the mission already. Either way, I'm going to give you guys one last quick shot of each talent tree, so feel free to pause the video here or go ahead and just come back to this point in the video if you want to see what each one of the different talent trees I currently have and what talents I've taken are. There are some that are really good, some that are eh, and some that are absolute must-haves. Either way, I want to give a big shout out to our Platinum and Above channel members, which include Caustic FPV, Jonathan S, and Jim Phillips. Thank you all so much for supporting us. Thank you guys for watching this video, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed it and want to see more Icarus as well as other survival game content. I'm Game Advisor, and I'll see you next time.